Now we come to the next subdural hemorrhage. Right? We have to differentiate this with the subdural hemorrhage. Okay, I will draw subdural here so that you can compare and contrast the both. This is, what was this? Epidural. Is that right? Now we will come to the concept of subdural hemorrhage. Few minutes spent on this concept may help you to save lives. Suppose this is the bone. Skull bone. And what was this layer? Peri? Austral layer. And what is this layer, please? Meningeal layer, right? And after that, yeah, what was here in? Please, what is this here? Arachnoid matter. Arachnoid matter, isn't it? And there's, there's no fun in telling that there must be, of course, cerebral hemisphere here. Central nervous system. And there's no fun in telling that here is fire matter. Am I clear? Now, you have to develop a very clear concept. What is the cause of hemorrhage in subdural area? For that, you have to understand anatomy of certain vessels. There are veins which drain the blood from the cerebral hemisphere. Those veins as a group are called cerebral veins. What are those veins? Cerebral, cerebral veins. veins. Now, let's, now, where the cerebral veins drain? This is cerebral vein which is draining from multiple point and taking the blood out of the brain and then it will pass through pia matter. Cerebral vein will pass through pia matter. Then it will pass through Arachnoid, that's very good. After passing through pia matter, it has to pass through, yes, arachnoid matter. And through the arachnoid matter, then it passes, perforates, what is this point? Dura matter. And eventually, it drains into venous sinus. I'll make this vein more clear. What is this vein? This is an example of cerebral vein, right? And cerebral veins, again, they are from cerebral hemisphere going out, pierce the pia matter, pierce the arachnoid matter, pierce the dura matter, and drain into different venous dural venous sinuses. Is that clear? Now, first I tell you the space. We were talk, going to talk about which hemorrhage? Yes? Subdural, Subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage should be between which two areas? Outside the? Outside the? Arachnoid and inside the? Dura. Inside the dura. So hemorrhage has to be somewhere here. Am I clear? No problem in understanding? Now, how the hemorrhage occurs here? Actually, this vein is very much fixed in the meningeal hole, dural hole. At this point, this, this vein is very much fixed, fixated, held tightly. Now, you know brain is normally floating in CSF? Brain is normally floating in CSF. CSF and CSF is present in which space? Sub? Arachnoid space. Right? Now, brain is actually normally floating like this in this space. If due to some reason, again, listen with your both ears and eyes open. If due to some reason, suppose this is the dural cover, dura is more faithful with the bone. Dura is more sticking with the bone. Arachnoid is more sticking with the brain. Pia and arachnoid are more sticking with the brain. Now listen. If this hand is brain and this is dura and the bone, suppose this is dura and this is the brain, normally brain is all the time floating here. You will be surprised that brain 
moves with every pulse. You know, brain in the CSF is floating so lightly that even arteries which are going to the central nervous system, with every pulse of the arteries, brain little bit floats. Anyway, this is not relevant right now. Due to some reason, if position of the dura mater and position of the brain suddenly shift, these bridging veins will rupture. I will tell you what is the reason, why it happens. First you trust me that due to any reason, if position of the brain and the dural position, they suddenly become a major shift, a big shift, these veins, cerebral veins, will rupture at the point where they are entering the dural sinuses. And that is why these veins are also called bridging veins. What is the special name for them in medical terminology? Bridging veins. They bridge through that area and this bridge is broken. Now why it should occur? Let me tell you. When you have sudden deceleration injury, now you must be thinking what is this deceleration injury? Let me tell you. You know this? Had it or not? Okay. What is deceleration injury? Good. Let me explain to others. You have a good concept. Listen. Let's suppose you are sitting in your Mercedes. In your own Mercedes, I mean. And you are going with full speed. And unfortunately, car hit something. Now, before the collision, before the real hitting, Mercedes was moving with the same speed your skull was moving and with the same speed as suppose your brain within the skull was moving. Is that right? You are carrying brain with, within the skull, isn't it? Now, what really happens that when suddenly car stop, skull hit and skull hit some point, suddenly skull stop and within the skull what was floating? Brain and it was at high speed. So, this fastly moving brain will abruptly hit on the, what is this, skull. Number one, brain itself will get contusion. We call it contusional injury. I will not discuss that right now. But due to the sudden, brain rapidly moving, suddenly decelerate, its velocity reduces, right? What will happen? The relationship between the dura mater and between the brain substance is stable or suddenly shifted? Suddenly shifted. And that will rupture? The bridge. Bridging veins or cerebral veins at the point where they are entering dural sinuses. sinuses. Am I clear? Again, let me repeat. These are deceleration injuries. How deceleration injuries occur? That, for example, in a car, when you're moving very rapidly due to an accident, fastly moving head and neck and your body suddenly decelerate. But within the skull, brain shift. Is that right? So not only brain itself get, for example, if moving forward, frontal lobe injured and then back also injured, I will not discuss later. That we'll discuss later. But sudden shift will produce injury at this point. Right? Or this can occur by another way. The someone hits on the back and the skull moves, but brain doesn't move with that. So relationship disrupt and bridging veins may be ruptured. Is that right? And this type of problem occurs more commonly in elderly. Why it is more common in elderly, this type of bridging veins rupture, cerebral veins rupture, because with age, brain little bit shrinks. When brain little bit shrinks, then chances of these veins to be ruptured are less or more? More. I no need to explain. You understand it? As during the aging process, brain size becomes little small, but skull does not shrink. Right? So brain is floating more freely. Is that right? And chances of such shifts are more. And that may produce this type of problem. Now you may be thinking, why I'm stressing so much? Because it's a life and death matter. All the basic sciences should be related with the clinical. Once you understand this thing that in the people who are having sudden head movement, right, and suddenly disturbed relationship between the brain and the skull or between the brain and the dura mater, they may develop 
rupture of these veins this, this type of problem is more common in elderly and more common in the people who develop falls for example alcoholic who fall very frequently or some unfortunate epileptic patient they fall very frequently so in alcoholics or in epileptic patient sometimes simple fall will disrupt the relationship between skull and dura mater on other side with, with the skull and dura mater on one side another relationship is arachnoid and the brain right so falls so many people who just fall they develop a bleeding like this and this type of hemorrhage sometimes start so gradually that patient even may, may have forgotten the initial fall or initial minor trauma if you have been hit on temple and you develop this hemorrhage you don't forget or your relatives don't forget but sometimes such a minor event can rupture these veins especially in elderly just like simple fall right a little head injury even the say in extreme cases sudden rotation i don't want to rotate my head right sudden sweep rotation of the head and some people may break these what veins that will produce a hemorrhage now this hemorrhage is okay this is the point right and blood start coming out now when blood is coming out from this vein this is moving between which points between the dura and arachnoid now dura and arachnoid are kept loosely so blood will rapidly spread or gradually spread rapidly, rapidly. it has more space to spread or less space to spread dura mater and arachnoid are loosely held together so if there is bleeding between these two points then blood can easily track so do you think they will develop big pressure or they will not develop big pressure they will not develop now this is the hematoma now this hematoma of course on one side it is having the dura mater and inner side it is having what is this arachnoid right and if this is skull coming like this of course then now you see this is well localized hemorrhage epidural is well localized hemorrhage usually subdural is not well localized epidural is usually like biconvex it is kept tense it is loose hemorrhage and classically under mri or under ct scan imaging it looks like a can you tell me what is it crescent this is death crescent not a happy news is that right so this looks like a crescent then it gives it what it, it is producing it may produce symptoms after many many days or even after many years of the fall after many years sometimes and of course the initial fall may have forgotten right and then it becomes very difficult problem that how to diagnose this situation so let me repeat that in this particular case which is now subdural hemorrhage right you have to consider this type of hemorrhage in the diagnosis of unexplained fluctuating levels of consciousness if you have a patient and he has fluctuating levels of consciousness right and it is unexplained you have to consider or rule out the presence of subdural hemorrhage especially if patient has history of fall is that right or patient has been on anticoagulant drugs for a long time right if patient has been on the anticoagulant drugs for the long time and onset of the whole problem related with it is very very gradual so we call this situation in serious onset not sudden onset no dramatic onset very gradual insidious onset of the clinical problems is that right now let's compare them then we'll move ahead i will ask you the question and you have to answer if i say 
there is hemorrhage between the dura mater and the skull. What type of hemorrhage is it? Yes? Epidural. And if there is hemorrhage between the dura mater and the arachnoid area? Subdural. If I say on CT scan, hemorrhage looks like crescent. Subdural. And if it looks like biconvex lens and well localized? Epidural. If I say hemorrhage is due to rupture of meningeal arteries and veins, epidural. epidural. If I say hemorrhage is due to breakdown or rupture of the bridging veins or cerebral veins when they are approaching the dural sinuses. Subdural. Yes, what is the cause? Subdural. subdural. And if I say hemorrhage is, intracranial hemorrhage is due to hit on the temple, most probably epidural. epidural. That's great. I'm impressed by you people. Good.